from the News 10 Broadcast Center. This is Elko Newsmakers on News 10, where news comes first. Good afternoon. Welcome to today's edition of Elko Newsmakers. I'm Terry Ritz, sitting here with uh, Nevada Governor Jim Gibbons, who's on his rural tour. Governor, welcome back to Elko. Terry, thanks for having me on your show. Do you have a uh, theme song for this year's tour? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, maybe it should be something like, I can see clearly now. Right. Know that music, but no, I, we don't have it. Started your tour on Monday, Carson City, and uh, made your way here to Elko. We're moving on to Winnemucca and down the road, uh, ending up in Virginia City. Maybe we can talk about it, I guess, halfway through the tour, uh, technically. Uh, how's it been going for you? But you know, it's been a wonderful experience. Uh, what we thought we would do, and this is maybe unique. Uh, I've done a lot of tours around the state as a congressman. Now I'm as uh, governor doing something a little bit different. I'm bringing government to the people of Nevada. You know, so many times uh, we find out that uh, uh, people are unable to get uh, to Carson City to address their government and address their issues and their concerns. So throughout this trip, I've brought with me several of my departmental directors, and they've been available in various stops. And uh, that has resulted in them not only seeing what the state is doing and what the concerns are of these people, because so many times they get locked up in that little cocoon of a building in Carson and never really see outside. So we're, uh, we're finding that this has been a very unique experience and uh, it's been great. We're halfway finished, as you say, and uh, I anticipate that what we're learning on this tour is not only going to help us solve some of these problems, but it's going to help us as a state government be a better government for the people of Nevada. You probably need a western um, mansion out here because you've been out here a lot lately. You were just here just a couple weeks ago touring the fire right. devastation throughout Elko County and I do want to talk a little about the wildfires and talk about the meeting you have coming up in Boise that you did talk about a couple weeks ago when you're here but when you were here a couple weeks ago Elko County was on fire right. and we toured some of that uh, those areas and maybe you can talk a little about your assessment of that and of course today it's cloudy it's rainy a great break for firefighters. Well you know I'm so glad to see the clouds move in and a little rain start to, to you know fall uh, we're a state that has uh, not had any rain in a long long time and as a result we had one of the most extreme fire seasons the beginning of fire season that we've ever had and the enormous number of fires and the amount of acreage that was lost uh, is going to take years and years and years to uh, rehabilitate and get it back to where it was before and get it into a useful mode where you know, the habitat serves the population of animals and people that uh, use it to, to that extent. Uh, we're, we're, of course, uh, looking at down the road, getting together next week with governors of Idaho and the governor of Utah. Uh, when we had the fire at Lake Tahoe, mm -hmm. I worked with Governor Schwarzenegger, and that brought to mind the fact that because our borders uh, of Nevada cover so much area, with so many different states that if there is a fire which normally doesn't recognize that political boundary of a state line that if there are resources that we can add as we did in Lake Tahoe because of the fragility of Lake Tahoe uh, to help that fire put it out quicker uh, even though we lost 250 homes and about 3,000 acres there you know there are times when we could use resources in another state so I worked out an agreement with California, and now I want to take that model of working that agreement and use it with Idaho, use it with Utah on our borders, because these are the areas where we see major, major fires, like in Elko County last year, this year. And if we can use Idaho resources that are available when they're not using them, help us put these fires out, keep them, cont keep them contained into a smaller area, uh, then that's going to be better for Nevada. It's going to be better for communities like Elko. But also, it allows for Nevada, when it's not using its resources, to share those resources in a critical time with those other states. So it saves us from having to duplicate a lot of resources, but also makes them available when we need them. Unfortunately, when all those fires did break out, it was everywhere, so everybody oh. was stretched thin. Terry, you're absolutely correct. I mean, I remember getting the phone call on a Sunday afternoon saying we had 115 new fire starts in the state of Nevada. The next day, there were people saying, well, we just discovered a 15,000 acre fire in Elko County that we didn't even know was burning because there was so, so much smoke and it was just everywhere there was fire. But 
Thank goodness the weather's cooled off now. We've got those under containment. We're seeing a little rain start to fall. That's going to help tremendously. But it really does tax the state of Nevada tremendously and its resources to have a fire season like we've got going on now. When you were here, you met with a couple of ranchers, uh, uh, Boyd Sprantling from uh, Wells, um, John Griggs from the Maggie Creek Ranch. Right. And uh, let's talk about rehabilitation after the fact. One of the real tragedies is trying to uh, deal with the massive acreages that are burned. And if we do not address the rehabilitation quickly, then what we see are two devastating impacts. We see invasive weed species, the cheat grass move in, and it has very little food value except in the early greens part of the stage of its life. But we see invasive weeds of other type move in and take over the habitat. That pushes those critical habitats uh, into obscurity because we just can't use them. But on the other hand, it also allows for runoff from the rains we get and the winters we have to drag the topsoil and all of that down into our water streams and therefore that water which we use for our you know, livelihood and our uh, quality of life uh, it becomes polluted with the runoff from these streams. Plus there's an air quality issue when you start having massive clouds of ash and dust that are brought up when we have these little uh, winter winds or summer winds that mm -hmm. go around. And that can be dangerous. People driving on highways, we've had to shut highways down because of just the dust and ash blowing around after these fires. Tremendous after effect. We want to address these issues quickly. We want to make sure that we uh, get what we can, res what resources we can onto those areas as quickly as we can to get them seeded for the winter so that we can grow uh, and rehabilitate that area with native species rather than with the invasive weeds. Right. And that is an issue that I'm working with our Department of Ag and I'm happy to say that uh, we've already met and we've already talked with uh, uh, Donna Rice, our uh, Department of Agriculture, and we want to produce a, uh, a program within the state that helps us grow these native species seeds so that we've got those on on hand when we have these massive fires so that we don't have to go out and start looking and saying well we just don't have the resource to do it but we want to start planning ahead for this because we know this is going to be a recurring thing and we need to get ahead of it what about the impact on wildlife you know the state makes a lot of money off yeah. of deer tags and and, and and those and kind of th for for the hunting for this well area. it's going to affect both hunting and fishing as i said the runoff in our streams is going to affect fishing the fact that we're taking away wildlife habitat with these fires is going to affect uh, the wildlife whether it's deer hunting elk hunting uh, upland game bird hunting we had our we have our director of department of wildlife with us on this trip to talk and to see and to look at the impacts of these fires as we're going around to make sure that he's planning accordingly on a state level as to how we will deal with uh, these issues and I will tell you it's a serious issue mm -hmm. I'm a hunter I like to get outdoors and I know that uh, when we see these wildfires, it's going to have a dramatic effect on it. Do you think people in Reno, Las Vegas, understand they hear these fires? Like, oh, just out in Elko County, mm -hmm. just, just burning, you know. Do you think they really understand the impact that it has on Elko County? Well, I hope so. I've been talking about it a great deal, both publicly and privately around the state as I've moved around. I talk about it when I make speeches. I talk about the impact. I talk about the long-range uh, disaster that we're facing if we don't get our rural economy up to speed and running properly. I hope that they're listening and uh, I'm, I just want to assure your listeners that this governor understands that issue. This governor is going to take the resources of Nevada that we have and apply them to solving these so problems so that we have a solution, that we have a long-term policy and a long-range plan for addressing these issues. Okay, look forward to uh, your meeting next week with the uh, Western Governors to see if we can work something out between them. That would be great. All right, let's talk a little about the legislative session. I'm sure you're glad everybody's uh, out of town, huh? <laughs> well, you know, Terry, I've served with uh, in the legislative branch for about 16 years. You know, 10 years in the United States Congress, six years in the state legislature. And uh, yeah, I, I've, I've now seen the other side of that coin. Uh, and let me, it's a challenge sometimes when they're in. Uh, you think that uh, what you've presented, whether it's your budget or your policies or your plans, 
uh, based on your experts that have been working in this field for years and years and years is the right way to go only to have a legislative body come in and say well our people tell us that no we don't want to do it this way we want to do it this way you got to come to some compromise that's politics I understand that I'm glad that they're gone and I think we had a wonderful uh, successful session uh, if you want to talk about education right, which is one of my big big goals for Nevada I'm very proud of the fact that I was able to put more money into education this time than any other governor in the history of Nevada we were able to create some significant and substantial changes to the education policies of Nevada enabling a program called empowerment which I have to admit is a model pretty much after some of our rural counties educational systems whether it's White Pine or Elko or Eureka uh, what that does is it allows for us to get away from the cookie cutter approach where we have schools patterned after each other no matter what the needs of that student population may be to creating an, uh, a school that's directly responsible for the children and the population needs of that uh, student body so they can control the curriculum they can control the length of the school day they can control the number of school days in a year uh, they can control the budget but at the end of the day it is that principal who's the CEO of that school is responsible for the outcome and the education of those children it has been remarkably successful across the board in other cities and other communities in other states incorporating it into Nevada's educational system is a huge step forward for the education of our children when you were running for governor you brought up the word empowerment people were running to the dictionary trying to figure out what this meant because there was some opposition to it at the right. beginning but I think people have come to learn more about it as you went along is that what you uh, came a across a absolutely and we're finding out the success of these uh, pilot programs that were started last year as well is so enormous in, in that they cannot deny now what empowerment is and how effective it is with regard to the education of children okay let's talk a little about something that's been affecting Elko County and that's been our air travel uh, right now no air service between Elko and Reno it's been that way for a while right. during the legislative session uh, they were asking for a million they got a half a million uh, still a start though to help uh, uh, offset the cost of getting someone in here to provide that service well I, I will uh, give great credit to John Car Carpenter and Dean Rhodes because they're always talking about air travel and the lack of air travel into Elko County and myself coming out of the air tourism industry I was a pilot for Delta and Western Airlines I understand the need for air travel in a modern 21st century environment Elko was sort of shortchanged uh, when air travel was dropped from some of the routes yes it was very expensive to get uh, to and from Elko by air but in some cases we need to have air traffic if we're or air transportation into a community if we're going to move a community into the 21st century people expect that today you know in Nevada miles are to us as years are to some eastern states right. <laughs> so when we have to go somewhere it's either you plan to drive a long time or you have to fly if you have to get there quickly I think uh, you know one of the things the legislature did uh, was to include with our support a, a pilot program to seed money as you would call it to help encourage other airlines I talked to other airlines I talked to Delta I've talked to SkyWest about renewing and they said renewing their service to Elko they said they would look at it and uh, of course they look at the cost per seat mile mm -hmm. and whatever their decisions are will of course be private sector but at least we've got some money to go after and make a case to maybe even some other airlines as to bringing service to Elko uh, to me it's very important uh, uh, I like to to fly I mean it's been in my life's blood for a long time and uh, certainly I like Elko and and if we can get air service into Elko I can get here more often than I do and I like that idea mm -hmm. Part of Delta's decision was they didn't have a lot of uh, flights at Reno to uh, help offset that. If you're booking a flight through SkyWest, you're usually going on to another destination. Right. So that was part of their uh, deal there. All right, let's talk a little bit about um, 
uh, tourism and, um, and and that aspect. Elko County seems to be every year coming up with new ideas to get people into this town. Right. And we talked about air travel, but also from an economic standpoint, uh, just today, uh, Newmont, along with Cashman Equipment and uh, and other partners, just built a brand or get, broke ground today on a new building that's going to help the mining industry. So we're seeing opportunities here in Elko County that people are coming in and investing in this community. Well, you know, Elko County is probably one of the richest counties in terms of uh, natural resources, whether it's outdoor experiences for the hunter, the fisherman, the camper, the hiker, the outdoor enthusiast, or whether it's the mining industry looking for resources in the ground and the opportunity that that brings, or whether it's just the quality of life that people enjoy when they come here and want to live here. Uh, Elko, to me, is, is one of the one of the most beautiful places on earth. I understand it, and I think uh, if people knew and understood uh, the scenic aspect and what Elko has to offer, uh, and the only way you get that understanding out there for people outside of our borders, outside of the governor, is to advertise. Mm -hmm. And so the more we do, the more we invest, and we have got the Economic Development and Tourism Authority in Nevada that is responsible for marketing not just Las Vegas and not just Reno, but marketing the state of Nevada to new businesses. I think you're going to see, as we keep the infrastructure moving ahead, as we keep our educational system growing and where we produce an educated workforce, we're going to see more people looking at Elko, not just as a tourist destination, but looking at as a long-term residency destination for their life because this is one of the most attractive places I, I feel. That, and I've been a, around a lot. I've, I've seen a lot of places in the United States, and I'll tell you, Elko County certainly has uh, uh, you know, a ranking right up there atop in my book. Let's talk about the mining law and, uh, and a, a meeting that's going to be coming up here in a couple of weeks to talk about the mining law and if we need to change it and those kind of things. Maybe you, you talked a little bit about it at the Chamber of Commerce meeting right. uh, today that you were at. Maybe you can talk a little about that and the state's uh, input on this. Well, you know, the mining law was established in 1872. It's called the 1872 mining law and it has worked for Nevada for all of these years. For 135 years it's worked. What we need to do is maybe modernize it for the realities of today's mining, but we don't want to change it so dramatically and so drastically that we destroy an industry that means so much to everybody. It's not just a job, as some people would say. It's an, it's an industry which supplies the quality of life essentials to states and countries around the world. When you start thinking about safety, you start thinking about the connections in airbags on automobiles made of gold, probably right here at one of our mines. Uh, when you start thinking about medical instrumentation and connectivities, those connections, those wires, all of those parts made from products produced in mines in Nevada. When you start thinking about uh, transportation, you start thinking about all of the products that go into an airplane, for example, that are made that have to be mined. When you start thinking about our food supply and the equipment that comes to help make our food supply better, more of it to keep it cheaper, it's made with equipment that's, my, that's products of mines. Across the board mining is one of the most important and essential industries, not just in Nevada, but in this country. The economy of this country and the national security of this country depends on mining. So we want to make sure that any proposed changes by somebody east of the Mississippi who does not understand mining, we want to make sure that they don't destroy the industry which is protecting us all in our national security, whether it's military or otherwise, whether it's assisting us in the quality of life, whether it's medical or safety, is not destroyed by their uh, radical beliefs that we need to get rid of mining. So I'm going to watch very closely what this legislation is proposed to do. And I'm going to advocate and I'm going to be talking with our federal delegation about this legislation. I want to make sure that we do not let something go through that is going to destroy the industry, which is so important to Elko, so important to Nevada, so important to the United States as mining. 
What about the UNR Fire and Science Academy? Uh, they've had a cut in their grants, and that's a very important, another one of those very important yeah. parts to Elko County. Well, anytime you see the wildfire situation, anytime you see a house on fire, you have to be grateful and thankful that we've got uh, so many first responders that are of such a quality and so professional that they're willing to rush into a burning area to rescue and save and protect people. The only way we get them in that well-trained uh, arena into that status of being a true professional is through uh, institutions like the Fire Academy out here. We have to make sure that we allow that to operate. It's a world-renowned, world-known uh, Fire Science Academy and it has produced a number of exciting new changes to how fires are fought, how firemen and are protected when they get in there, new equipment. And all of that strategy and all of that training is the result of a fire science academy. For it to lose its funding means that people don't have that appreciation uh, for what it's being produced. So as a, as a state, I want to make sure that we do what we can to assist uh, the fire academy with its grant process. Uh, I'm happy to uh, lend my support uh, to any of the federal grant funding formulas to, for them to apply for, to make sure that they have the resources to keep the doors open, to keep people coming and learning, so that we, when we have a disaster like we've been suffering through, can turn and say thank you to the firemen who saved our homes, or saved the land, or saved a life uh, because of the training they received out here. I want to make sure our Winnemucca viewers get a chance to uh, hear something about their city. You're going to be heading there right after this. And they had a major wildfire that came very close to town uh, during the wildfires that we had here. What well, are we talking about, Winnemucca? You know, we're going to go there. We're going to talk about the same thing. We're going to talk about what we're doing in terms of resource allocation, resource policies, being able to utilize uh, the state resources when they're called. How do we fight fires? What are our challenges in, in whether it's... Winnemucca, Elko, or Reno, because the Reno fire came right down to the backyards of houses, just as it did in uh, Winnemucca. And, uh, you know, it, truly, we want to make sure that their, their concerns and their ideas are heard. And as I said, I'm going to go there, and I'm going to bring our state government and let our state government see firsthand uh, some of the devastations, some of the concerns these people have, and help us be better managers of their tax dollars in how we apply that to those problems that we are facing, not just in Elko, but in Humboldt County or Washoe County or whatever county in the state needs it. So we're going to talk about all those issues and uh, hope we uh, hear from them as well. We're coming up on the eighth month that you've been in office as right. governor. How has it been? Uh, what have been some of the challenges? What have some, some positive things that have come out of your first eight months in office? Well, Terry, I have to laugh at that because, uh, the, you know, with the first time you get elected, you've got five days to get a budget into the budget committee, and that's a $7 billion experience right there. And then we have, uh, you know, very uh, short-term jump into a legislative session, now into a fire season. It seems like it's one challenge after another. It is the most rewarding thing I could have done. I love being governor of the state of Nevada, and I plan to be the best governor the people uh, have seen. Let's talk a little bit politics uh, with presidential candidates. Uh, boy, I tell you, Nevada has become a hotbed. Elko County has become a hotbed. We saw last year with their race for governor for uh, the uh, federal races. Right. Uh, President Bush was here in November right before the election. Uh, this weekend, Senator Barack Obama will be here in Elko, and then in two weeks, Mitt Romney will be here. So they're coming faster and furious to Nevada. Well, let me say something about rural Nevada, and especially Elko County. You can change the direction of an election. When you look at some of our larger communities, they're not as, in my book, as actively engaged in the political process as the, as the rural counties are. Because out here, people in rural Nevada know and understand the impact of the political uh, arena, the people that they elect to public office. I understand that these people want to come here because we vote in higher percentages in rural Nevada. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting dynamic that should be appreciated by not just the voters in Elko, but also by the candidates. So we're going to see more presidential candidates. We're going to see statewide candidates uh, that have elections showing up more often. I think uh, 
what we've seen last year is only going to be amplified by what we see in the 08 presidential election. Let, let's talk about a financial standpoint on cities like Elko who have these uh, high profile people come to town and the cost of yeah. security for these people that end up falling back on the local government. We saw that on the presidential uh, and, and, and other things like that. Is there is there some sort of a reimbursement or something that these, I mean, because some of these cities look at, uh, they have their budget and they end up going budget in some areas because of all the attention that one, one place is getting. Not that you have an answer for that, but just have you comment on a little bit about that. Well, tell you, it's a very interesting question, one which we haven't uh, been directed to look at before, but it's something that I'm going to take from this meeting with us right here today and go back and find an answer to that. I know there are opportunities for communities to get reimbursed on the federal side when there is a need for Secret Service and all of those uh, uh, costs that are associated with blocking off roads, with making sure the security is, is perfect for a presidential candidate. That's an enormous undertaking and that's a very costly undertaking. I want to find out for you whether communities like Elko can get reimbursed. I know it's a huge expense. I know, uh, you know, there's overtime involved for police officers. Well, I know the like state that, of Nevada so. has to pick up some of the costs for governors to mm -hmm. come in. We provide security for them right. while they're here. Absolutely. So uh, they're coming fast and furious. So it is going to be a very interesting political season. Uh, the governor's race was nothing compared to what's coming up, right, Governor? Well, I think it's going to be a challenge. I think it's going to be very interesting, and I'm looking forward to it as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a Republican and uh, seeing uh, the candidates that are out there, I think it's a great opportunity. This is one of the most fascinating presidential elections. Mm -hmm. The dynamics that are taking shape and what's pushing on you know, the candidates from every direction. Who knows what that direction is going to be two months from now, let alone you know, four months, eight months, right. ten months down the road. So it's going to be a fascinating uh, time for all candidates. I want to talk a little about autism because our president and CEO of this company, Ralph Tadre, uh, mm -hmm. uh, of Sunbelt Communications, the parent company to News 10 here, uh, you just the other day signed a, um, a uh, proclamation for Ralph Tadre Day. Yes. Maybe talk about Ralph and his contribution to autism. And we, that was a big uh, issue during the legislative session. You know, I have loved what uh, Ralph has done on doing public service announcements for autism and the identification of autism. And Ralph really deserved to be recognized and he was. I wish we could do more. I think we're going to be able to put uh, more resources in there. The First Lady of Nevada, Dawn, uh, is out working hard. She took on autism as one of her principal challenges and I'm glad that she's doing that because I think that's going to highlight people's awareness of this issue and hopefully we can get some solution and some resources into it. But it's because of uh, people like Ralph that uh, are also helping to bring this issue to a level of understanding, both on the public side as well as in the elected official side that is going to make a difference in the future. Yeah, it takes somebody to bring that to the uh, light of the issue because there's a lot of people out there who are suffering from that that yeah. don't get the financial system they need. Governor, the Elko County Fair is coming up in a few weeks, so we might see you back again for that, huh? I'm hoping to be back for it. I plan to be back for it, so we'll see you then. All right, Governor, thanks a lot. Thank you, Terry. Nevada Governor Jim Gibbons has been our guest today on Elko Newsmakers right here on Channel 10. For a repeat of this show, you can log on to our website anytime, 24-7 at kenvtv.com. Until next week, I'm Terry Ritz for Elko Newsmakers here on News 10.